Hi, welcome to the Microsoft Partner Showcase. I'm Chris Mitchell, a partner solution architect specializing in data and AI. And today we're talking with Ofer Ashkenazi on the Fabric uh, Project Program Management Team, and we're gonna be talking about Power BI embedding scenarios. Hi Ofer, uh, we work with partners a lot, and one of the things that comes up very frequently is, well, there's a lot of options for embedding, and how do I choose the right one? Would you mind digging in a little bit and exploring what some of the embedding options are in Power BI? Hi, Chris. Sure. This is my uh, focus area that has been yeah. there for like four and a half years now. So let's start by uh, talking the different about the different embedding options. Sometimes it's a, it can be a confusing space. Let's put some some order into this chaos. So the first three options on the left hand side talk about the rudimentary options of embedding. Very basic stuff, just choosing the report to embed and auto generating some iframe code for it or being able to specify, if you look at the embedding website or SharePoint Online, specify the page or some uh, filters in the URL, and maybe even doing some single sign-on. But it's very rudimentary authentication, always uh, based on AD or completely anonymous. When, when we get into some more serious stuff, it's either embedded for organization, also known as user owns data, or embed for customers, uh, also known as app owns data. These two scenarios use the client SDKs and allow you to have much more control and customization over the user experience, the layout, and many, many other things. And you notice that with the embed for customers, you actually get even more flexibility in terms of authentication authorization. It's really up to your application backend. We don't tell you how to authenticate your end users. You use just this uh, service principle to connect on behalf of your application users to Power BI, and then your application backend distribute the content access control based on your particular needs of the app. Right. Appreciate that. Yeah, we work with ISVs a lot, um, and they're very frequently using uh, the app owns data scenario. Um, but one of the things that we've noticed, uh, you know, in some of our collaboration over the years on the Power BI Embedded Go Big program, among, among other things, is that you know, these ISVs a lot of times struggle in implementation simply because there are so many options. You know, could you talk about that a little bit? For sure. And as you know, Chris, we both collaborated on the Power BI Embedded Go Big program for the last four years. This was a program that was designed for large scale, high potential customers and uh, ISVs that needed those kind of sophisticated uh, implementations, typically multi-tenant, typically global, uh, also with very specific access control and, and specific user experience. Some of the users are just viewers of reports, some of our editors and publishers of reports. And so they needed this embed for your customer scenario, in which case we give them just the building blocks, not an out of the box solution. It's sometimes too complex uh, or time consuming for many customers. Yeah, I mean, certainly, um... While, while there's a lot of power there, you know, like a lot of the ISVs we've worked with have found that like super tedious. Um, and so, uh, so obviously we've talked about the Solution Accelerator program now. Can we, can we help kind of characterize why you might want to choose something, uh, choose the, the Solution Accelerator program instead of building it on your own? Indeed. So based on these uh, gaps in functionality, or needs by our customers to get to production much faster, especially when they're doing POCs or, or pilots. But even if there are small shops that, that need to get faster there, and, and as you recall, during the COVID years, we've had even the largest customers and ISVs also suffering from all sorts of freezes in, on resources and developer availability. So basically we took, we took a look at uh, IP of partners that we work with in the program, that we found those partners that we're very capable in this space, and we said, why don't you create customizable solution accelerators where the customer does not need to start from scratch. They can take your accelerator, tailor it, white label it, customize it a little bit, and then they've got a car they can go start the journey with. Right, that's great. Um, can, can I know you've, you've talked a little bit about like the characterization of like uh, cost benefits of these. Do you have anything that, that would help illustrate that? For sure, we talked about authentication authorization but in fact, there are other trade-offs. So the trade-offs exist not just in the authentication authorization, the trade-offs in terms of publishing or, or sorry, in terms of functionality on the different uh, uh, scenarios, as well as the taxing of how much it would cost you to 
uh, do the actual implementation, the coding effort. So okay. when we introduce the accelerators, we, we can actually take a look at just the right hand side because the left hand side we saw we, we saw it's not enough for the uh, ISVs implementations. So just focusing on these three offering, the one on the left where we bring out of the box and the, the same one for the center, the one on the right where we rely on the partner IP to bring, in fact, the same kind of flexibility as the embed for customers, but with better functionality, actually even better than what you get with the embed for organization. Uh, just as an example, some of these accelerators provide the ability to schedule report and generate printouts that will be sent at particular times of the day that the user can specify. So that's a, a new functionality for them. And then there's the uh, tax again, which the accelerator either give you just the least amount of, of coding that you need to do on creating your own clients or simply use their existing clients and then you have practically no coding effort, maybe just integration into your application. Right, right. Well, that's cool. I mean, certainly this is a great uh, benefit for any ISV that's wanting to do this and it'll help them increase time to market. Uh, can we, you know, take a look under the hood, so to speak, and uh, examine, you know, what, what makes up a solution accelerator? For sure. And there's a lot to see under the hood. So first of all, take a look at the uh, typical implementation of a multi-tenant uh, uh, customer or an ISV app typically a web app with a web front end, the back end, and the data that is isolated per tenant of this app. Uh, in order for them to not write their own code and use the accelerator, they need to deploy it from somewhere. So some of our accelerators could be deployed directly from the uh, publisher's website, but all of them actually offer Azure Marketplace offerings. That you can install directly from the Azure Marketplace into your, that is the customer's Azure subscription. And what it brings under the hood is lots of stuff. There's a front end, there's a, an accelerator back end module, there's an admin module that allows you to tailor white label as well as provide the, the security mechanism. And it's all of the context that is kept in a configuration database in sync with the workspaces and their content. And obviously some of these, actually all of these accelerators can create a workspace per tenant to properly isolate and have scalable implementation of the accelerators. Right, yeah, I know those modules um, seem fairly benign, but they're pretty powerful when you think about it, you know, being able to do things like spin up and create new tenants and then deploy canned reports into tenants if you're if you have consistent deployments that you want to stamp out over and over and over. Yeah, so they're super powerful. Indeed, uh, what, and yeah. uh, I, I oh, won't sorry, go no, go into the details, but there are more into this and you, you, you'll see in the landing page exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, now one of the things that we've talked a little bit about too is, is you know, ways to integrate these accelerators with your application. And I know there's more than one way. Um, can you dig in a little in there a little bit? For sure, let's zoom in. So okay. in terms of integration options, there are different ways of doing the integration. There's the right hand side here with the application, the original application of the ISV, but then you can either create a standalone, completely standalone implementation with a standalone front end that you need to, and obviously it requires no integration, but the user will have to switch between tabs. Uh, the module of the analytics will be on a different tab, but it's connected to the same Power BI that connects to the same data coming from that same application. That's kind of the integration is at the data layer. Yeah, the I'll next call option, it like a sidecar, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The next option is to use a, a URL redirect, which means that from the application, you'll be redirected to that uh, other uh, UI of the analytics uh, module, and then back with using some link. Another option is simply to have that uh, web front end embedded inside your solution. And obviously it includes an iframe that is connected to Power BI. So basically you get it embedded into your application. The last option, which is the most advanced because it requires you to build your own application front end and use an SDK in order to enjoy the, the functionality or the capabilities that enable the functionality as well on the front end but then you have the flexibility of creating your own iframe very tightly integrated with your application logic and the context of your application. 
Right. So, so that last scenario would be, you know, it would be do, taking advantage of, you know, like understanding your tenants and which users belong to which tenant and, and present you a list of reports from a navigation, but you'd have to build your own navigation experience, right? Actually, all of them could, but the last one will actually let you have some front end integration as well. So, you know, right. the users on this particular uh, portion of the application, you change the filters based on that. Great, great. Well, this has all been super helpful. Um, if uh, if we had somebody that was uh, wanting to find out more, where, where are our next steps? Where, where would we direct somebody to find out more well, about the Solution Accelerators? They just click on the landing page, and the landing page is going to be part of our documentation. And over here, you can find any information that I was talking about, the different accelerators from the different vendors, the same diagram that I showed you. And here it goes into the details that I was showing a preview of those with those uh, 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 sort of uh, tiny icons. Uh, and now we're, we're going to switch back and maybe talk about the actual program design principle. Is that OK, Chris? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. And so we'll talk about the, the design principles and the benefits at the high level. So again, the accelerate time to market was the main thing in our mind, but we wanted to make sure that we do it in a cost effective way with minimal coding effort being able to abstract away the complexity as well as deploying at scale through the marketplace. On top of this, we wanted to make sure that the enhanced functionality that typically was requirements from those big and sophisticated customers was there, both in terms of the multi-tenancy, the end-user authentication, but the actual customizable and white-label user experience with the added features. Uh, a very important principle on, on top of this all was to make sure that these partners that were developing those accelerators according to our best practices uh, offered a, a wide range of choices. So we want to make sure that there's a variety of deployment configuration, capability options, and engagement and pricing model across the, the partners that we have in the program. So... Um... So obviously, you know, this is uh, this is a program that I know it's it's either live or it's about to go live. Um, what's the future roadmap for this program? I mean, where where we're where are we starting? I know we're starting with a few partners. Yep. Uh, I'd love to hear who the partners we're starting with, and then and then where it's going from there. So we're partner, We're starting with three partners, uh, two of which we've uh, I came to know through the Pabia and Bennett Go Big program because they were helping my largest customers there. One of them is Mac Software with this accelerator called Embed Fast. The other one is iLink with an accelerator called Embed Dash. The last one was a partner I knew of uh, only after I started the program or started the engagement with the other partners. And it, it turned out that these guys had the same thoughts. So they created a, a solution accelerator that has already been for more than three years in the market with more than 40 customers across multiple continents. And so I've worked with all three partners, and these are our initial offerings of the program. Great. Shall we talk about the future? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear. Um, love these partners. We've been working with them for several months now, and they're they're doing great stuff. I'm loving the marketplace offerings that they're putting out there. But I'd love to hear, you know, what our next steps are beyond this initial launch. Sure. So uh, what's next? Uh, well, first of all, we got to launch. We got to launch this program. So there are two phases we're going to do in Q1. One is going to be more of a social media campaign. The other one is going to be based on some conference in the future that we're going to attend. Uh, we're going to have those accelerators enhanced with Fabric functionality. Some of these accelerators already support Fabric, but you need to create your own Fabric capacity. In the future, once we have the APIs to do it programmatically, that's going to be incorporated into the accelerator. That would give us more functionality. As an example, the ability to do CICD through Git integration, the ability to connect with directly connectivity to Delta Parquet files on the one leg on Fabric, and many much more features that will come in. Right. Once uh, we get that Fabric, once we get that Fabric integration, basically all those rich new features of Fabric just come along for the ride, which is great. Exactly, and that's yeah. the reason why it's not really about Power BI embedded analytics. It's really yeah. about a Fabric <laughs> embedded analytics. Yeah. Now, we also want to expand the program to cover more partners. We're, we're sure that this is going to be appealing to many other ISVs and SIs, but also others that would like to offer similar accelerators, either horizontal accelerators or also industry-specific accelerators. And we have already have some interesting parties uh, in the space that would like to uh, explore the industry-specific aspect of the accelerators. 
right? This almost seems like an evolution of the Power BI templates from back in the day because mm-hmm. you can, you know, when those industry vertical partners could theoretically come with a with a industry specific data model in addition to all the the accelerator framework that goes around it. So that'll be really exciting to see as well. Exactly. And yeah. and think think also that specific industries have specific data sources with their own processing and all sorts of uh, compliance issues. And so this would would make sure that we can e- accelerate even further. This is going to be orders of magnitude the accelerations in time to market for these customers and ISVs. Well, that's great. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to go through this with us today, Ofer. Um, I'm really excited about the future, and I, and I think this will really um, accelerate uh, partners' uh, time to market for their solutions, which I think is really great as well. Uh, any closing thoughts that you had to share with us? or no, just thank you, Chris, for your yeah. continued collaboration of you and, and your team. Yeah, awesome. Appreciate it. Happy to work with you. Uh, well, thanks again, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next uh, next solution showcase. Bye-bye. Thanks again.